Hello there, and welcome to my comparison of what I consider to be every significant LEGO Star Wars Slave 1 model. This excludes like mini and micro models, those are dumb. But we're taking a look at the ones that like can actually fit a minifigure in them and were like individually released, except for this one, which was actually released as part of the Master Builder series Cloud City set. But we will take a quick look at it next to them at some point in the video. It just won't be included like the rest because the rest of the Slave 1s make up for every individual Slave 1 set ever released. If you enjoy this, lego star wars slave one comparison and you want to see more make sure you leave a like down below and if you have anything to say about all these sets or you would change any of my rankings of them at the end of the video make sure you comment down below anyway if you're new to my channel i actually have a system for my comparison videos and it is a ranking system which i will rate each individual set like i said the one that came in the master builder series cloud city is not going to be a full part or section of this video it's kind of left out because it was part of a set that had way more than just just a slave one the rest of these are just slave one so like minifigures and value will actually apply to them unlike with that one where you can't really put a price on that because it came in a 350 dollars set and you don't really know what minifigs it really should have came with because it just had the boba fett that goes inside but the rest of them all come with other minifigures so with for that reason we're just not going to talk about that one too much in this video but i do want to go on and get started here first i'll give you the general overview the first slave one here is from 2000 and it's just boba fett slave one the second Slave 1 came about in 2002 with the release of Episode 2. It was Django Fett Slave 1. It is to date the only Django Fett Slave 1 ever. Let Lego know we want another one because there's just been a few other uh, non-Django Fett Slave 1s. It's okay, but maybe the next Slave 1 they make will be uh, Django Fett's. That would be nice. 2006 brought us this fresh new look at Boba Fett Slave 1. Really an upgrade from the original 2000 model. Moving into 2010, we saw a major color change, but not too much design change. 2015 brought us the beautiful UCS model. 2018 brought us this small model from the Master Builder series, and 2019 has brought us the 20th anniversary edition, which is just absolutely gorgeous, like the UCS one. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our first category of the minifigures and take a look at all of the figures that were included in these Slave 1 sets, and we'll decide which one had the best. And here are all the figures laid out before you. We'll start from left to right with the 2000 version of the Slave 1, which included just a lonely Boba Fett. It also did have the Han Solo and Carbonite, which I'm not going to be counting as a minifigure in any of these sets, but it was a unique print with a little topper piece there with a the tile. So just Boba Fett in that set. Not really going to get it done for me. The 2002 Django Fett Slave 1, of course, included the exclusive Django Fett, an absolutely beautiful figure with his pistols and his backpack that was combined with the helmet, of course. Same kind of helmet mold as the original. It also had a young Boba Fett, which was important to a lot of people, pretty rare at the time until now that they have the uh, newer updated versions of both these figures. Now they're not quite as coveted, but still have that very nice nice original look for Lego Star Wars. Moving on to 2006, we saw many more characters in the Slave 1 this time. We had Boba Fett, had the Dengar, had the Best Bang Guard, and IG-88. An absolutely great cast of characters for this set. I love the Dengar, especially because he has the very large Star Wars blaster. The Best Bang Guard is great because he has this really cool arm printing that was like super unnecessary, but LEGO threw it on there anyway, so great job, LEGO. And of course, IG-88 in the metallic silver color looks really cool as well. Behind them is a Han Solo and Carbonite, as you would expect with a slightly different topper design using a grill piece and a little hinge piece, I guess. And that basically allows it to uh, stay inside the Slave 1 a lot easier than the older version, which we'll get to during like the design or playability, whatever section of this video. 2010 brought the newly redesigned Boba Fett, and I did buy that set used so that helm didn't come in the greatest condition, but it's supposed to more or less look like that. Anyway, the problem with this figure to me is no arm printing, no leg printing, and no cape printing or whatever. Like, it's bad. Um, yeah, it's it was a step in the right direction, but it was only a step. They were still a few steps away from making Boba Fett look great. That being said, this one did have an exclusive face print, which might bump it up for a few of you guys. That is what the face looked like. Again, I believe that's exclusive to this set. If not, it was at least out of the slave ones we have here. It's the only one with that face print. So that's pretty neat. You, of course, had Bosk and Han Solo as well. Han Solo in Carbonite behind there with the newly redesigned Han Solo and Carbonite piece. Way, way better than the previous one. 
Again, we don't really count that as a minifigure. When 2015 rolled around and the UCS version of the Slave 1 came out, they had updated the Boba Fett to have a crazy arm printing and leg printing, as well as printing on that little pauldron that I mentioned before. Of course, the helmet looks nice and shiny on this version. The set also included a Stormtrooper, a Bespin Guard, and Han Solo with a pretty cool looking face there. Of course, Han Solo and Carbonite made another return, the exact same as before. A great four figures in all. Come 2019, with the 20th anniversary edition of the Slave 1, we have the most many figures ever in a Slave 1 with five. All the other sets had four or less. Included in that five is the Han Solo in Carbonite. Of course, the Boba Fett, which didn't really make many changes, if any at all, besides removing the arm printing from the 2015 UCS version, which is kind of sad to see considering how much they charge for the new set. You've had Forlom, Zuckus, which is an exclusive and first time minifigure in this Slave 1. Very cool to see. I think a lot of people are really excited about that Zuckus figure. And then lastly, Han Solo, who looks really awesome, just kind of uh, dumbed down from the version that came in the 2018 class. Cloud City set. So nice looking Han Solo. And we almost forgot Princess Leia, the 20th anniversary edition minifigure there. It was kind of a bonus included in the set. So that's all the figures included in every Slave 1 that has been released to date. Now we just have to rank them so I can write it down on my score sheet. It's obviously an incredibly tough question to answer as to which set has the best minifigures, but I firmly believe the brand new 2019 Slave 1 is going to have the best minifigures, so that set is going to get 6 points. And I didn't explain this earlier, but at the end we basically add all the points together and the set with the most points wins. So for having the best minifigs out of all 6 sets, it gets 6 points. The particular set of figures that I deem to be second best will get 5 points, 4 points for the third best, and so on down the line. And again, at the end, the totals will be tallied. So for this, I think the second best figure set, and Nostalgia almost wants me to say the 2006 version, but I gotta go UCS just because they made that Boba Fett so, so good. We're going to give five points to the UCS version from 2015. Moving down the line, 2006 is definitely going to get the four points from this list of sets. Now, 2002 could beat out 2010. You know, you could go either way. You could say the nostalgia for the original Jango Fett is just too much and it beats out 2010. But I think just to be fair with the Bosk minifigure, the new Han Solo and Carbonite, the new Boba Fett and everything with that new set, you got to give it the nod and give it three points. The second best figures are going to go to the 2002 Django Fett Slave 1, two points. And then finally, the worst figure selection and figures in general is going to go to the 2000 version, which just gets one measly point. So after one round, those are your scores. Let's move on to the playability of the Slave 1. The 2000 model has very little to offer from a playability standpoint. The cannons or blasters at the front end of the ship can move or rotate 360 degrees. So you do have that going for you. The wings on the sides do also move with your rotation of the ship as well. So when it's landed, they'll be down. When it's up, they move to a horizontal position to the ground or they stay horizontal to the ground. Um, you can also put your Han Solo and Carbonite inside of the Slave 1 by dropping down this green little platform. You're going to bring your Han Solo over. You're going to slide him in between the inverted slopes there and slide that up and he is in there. Kind of a weird feature. I mean, obviously it makes sense, but... I don't know, it just, it's weird the way it works. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. So he does fit in there, which is important though for this 2000 Slave 1, I think. Then the cockpit is going to be able to open kind of in two sections. You can open up the first section like that, but the whole thing will open like that. You have some control panels. You have a blaster for uh, Boba Fett in there. And if you sit him down, he's actually gonna be able to sit right about there. Is where you're gonna wanna keep him in my opinion. There's enough space for his backpack in there. So they did account for that. And you can close this right on up and keep him in there. And then when it, you're in a vertical orientation, he is facing forward. So pretty nice cockpit design. That's really all the playability besides just swooshing around and playing with it like you would play with anything else. Uh, no like flick fire missiles or anything. This uh, set came a little too early for that. 2002's Django Fett Slave 1 brought us a lot more playability just because of its size and the wings will still move with your movement of the Slave 1 like the previous model did to stay vertical. I think I tightened them a little bit too much and that's why they are having a tough time. The cannons on the front move, they are actually on a little bit of a more rigid thing this time so you can only get certain uh, spots for it which I actually think is nice because it keeps it uh, right where you want it. I like that. Also, you're going to find a little compartment up here with a little spot for whatever you want to place up here, if I can ever open it. 
It's empty right now, but again, just space for storage there, which can be fun. Another one on the other side. You can drop these panels down. You're going to find some big bombs and missile things in there, which you can't really shoot off or anything, but they're in there, and I'm sure some kids got some good play with that. If you open this up, you can actually pull out uh, what you could just, you know, call extra missiles and such. More stuff to just pull out and play with, which is nice to see. Just more compartments. This compartment here actually hides some, some Lego... Uh, what did they call them in universe ion bombs or something um, seismic bombs you guys will con correct me in the comment section i'm sure but these things are what i think they drop out and blows up like the asteroid fields and the way you're going to drop these out of the actual slave one is by pushing this up which allows them to drop out of the bottom here you guys can see that they all drop out and you can have them drop on to whatever you want you can do a little bombing run with the slave one if you want to very interesting uh play feature there the final play feature on this set is found on the bottom side with this thing that attaches by magnets. I, I don't understand what this is still to this day, even though I've had this set for a couple of years now. Basically, it's just a storage container that connects with a magnet to the inside of the vehicle. And I don't know why they decided that was a good thing to put on this set. I... I'm not really particularly complaining, but I'm also not saying it's a good thing. It's just an oddity that happened with this set. So that just connects up in there with a magnet and kind of swings freely. Um, just like the other slave ones, of course, you can actually place your Boba Fett inside the cockpit, or rather this would be a Jenga Fett, right? Because this is Jenga Fett Slave 1. You can place him inside the cockpit. He's got his blasters in hand. And if you want to take young Boba Fett, you can place him behind him and you are good to go. So playability on this one, pretty good. Average probably, compared to what we're about to take a look at. In my opinion, 2006 took playability to a whole new level. You retained all the same features from the older model with the rotating wings as you rotate the Slave 1. You have these on the front, which you can actually get to stop in any position now because they don't have like little hinges that stop it every, I don't know, 1 16th of the way. They're actually just completely free-floating, which is nice. They can't spin 360 degrees because they get stopped there, but that's all right. You have a storage compartment here, which is now a little bit larger vertically. Uh, for some missile or rather uh, weaponry for your troopers in there. Nice little extra weapons for whoever. You can open up this side panel to reveal some nice missiles inside, which you can have drop out. Well, that didn't seem to work very well. Well, they're supposed to pop right off like that, and you can boom and have them blow something up if you want. That's very nice. There are, oh man, that is not working the way you would think. Uh, they are on both sides, so you actually have two of them in the set, which is nice. The coolest feature of this set to me, though, is going to be this one here, where you can open up these two panels and reveal a giant spring-loaded shooter, which you can shoot by pushing up on this particular piece here, which we are going to do right now, because of course you want to see it shoot. That's what you came to this video for, so let's do it. Boom! Very nice. So that is a nice feature that is pretty well hidden in there. I love that you can close this up and it's just like it's not even there. So absolutely beautiful design and hidden feature in there. You also have the section for Han Solo and Carbonite. And like I mentioned during the minifigure section, he has that little hinge on the end. That is going to go right up on top of that. And then you are going to lift that up like so. And that's about the way I usually put it in. So pretty nicely hidden in there as well. You're also going to find more seismic bombs within, which you can drop out just like in Django Fett's sleeve one by pushing up on this section and again they're going to drop right out of the bottom these ones are white you can reload those pretty easily by doing the same thing or rather just having this panel open you just reload them like so the set also of course has the standard feature where you can put boba fett in the cockpit an absolute shocker move the cockpit take boba fett sit him down and he is going to sit right in nice dead center in the cockpit there's no room for any other minifigures inside the set well i guess you could probably fit some figures inside the bottom of the cockpit but really no like actual space for them so that's boba fett slave one from 2006 with some pretty dang good playability especially that hidden missile 2010 brought much of the same obviously with the wings that can move back and forth the cockpit you can put Boba Fett in just kind of kind of skip things you can rotate the blasters you have storage space and missiles that are going to drop out storage space up here in the front again just having trouble getting it open a little storage space there's actually you got a little a box in here so you can fit whatever you want in there a little bit of uh added fun there with the box i actually quite like that they they have an actual box in there instead of just kind of an open space the, the missiles that pop out are flick fire missiles which i really like and the way they pop out actually allow you to use them when they're flying so that's actually pretty interesting and you can pop them out on both sides and have them ready to fire at will at whoever your foe is so that's pretty nice 
fold those up really nicely. They'll hide right back into the design of the set. The actual cool feature on this set though is gonna be hidden in here once again, much like the 2006 version. Also note the small compartment there for whatever storage you want, but you actually have some flick fire missiles inside the middle of the vehicle here, which can be shot off by pushing this orange button in the back with a little bit of force. You'll get these to shoot off one at a time and they'll drop down and be ready to fire the next one each time. So pretty nice design for stud shooters. Close that right up. You are ready to go. This one, of course, had the newer version of Han Solo and Carbonite. So you're actually able to take Han Solo, place him in there, have him hold on to the clips that are provided inside of the, the Carbonite piece. And then he can actually stay uh, inside of here pretty easily. You just kind of drop him in there. It's going to hide right underneath there and pretty well hidden. I actually like that better than the other ones because the other ones you have to like keep the panel up and it's weird. But this one does a pretty nice job of hiding him without making the design look any different and allowing you to play with that pretty easily by opening and closing it. So that's the 2010 Slave 1 playability. With the 2015 UCS version, we of course lose quite a bit of playability. It's really meant for display. You have the rotating cannons, which actually both rotate at the same time because they're on the same little Technic bar. You have these, which can pop out and reveal some missiles. They are on both sides, so you'll have different missiles on both sides ready to shoot at whoever your opponent is. And then if we can remove the cockpit, you're actually going to be able to put uh, Boba Fett in there, just like all the other sets, except you have a much more detailed cockpit area. The best feature on the UCS model is going to be found underneath for the Han Solo and Carbonite. I think you can pull that out and there is your Han Solo and Carbonite clipped in underneath. So he can actually hide up inside of the bay of the Slave 1 like so and you'll never even see him which is just the best way to do it. So very nice little feature there on the UCS Slave 1. Overall very nice just really lacking a lot of functionality as this one was obviously really made for display and so it had to give up a lot of functionality. Finally, we have the 2019 version for playability. Unfortunately, it didn't retain the single axle design that allowed the turrets to kind of rotate together at once. Kind of liked that. These panels don't really open up or do anything, so you get nothing out of that, no storage or anything. For your Han Solo and Carbonite, he's actually going to fit right under here this time. You can just drop him in there, kind of like the 2010 version, and he is very well hidden there. You're never even going to know he's there. On top, you'll find some spring-loaded shooters, and unfortunately, they are not hidden like they are on previous versions. Versions, but if you want to shoot them, you actually just push down on those red pieces at the top here. So for an example, we'll just shoot one here, just like that. Just destroyed something off to my left. But yeah, that's uh, how you shoot spring-loaded shooters. Pretty easy to do. The cockpit will allow you to place in a Boba Fett minifigure, as usual. Nice little space for him there for you to play around in. The wings, just like all the other sets, do move. These ones move independently of each other, which is quite odd. Usually they move together. Left one obviously moving. Right one not. Very interesting there. Again, most of the time they would move uh, with each other. This time they are independent. Now, the coolest new feature that this new Slave 1 was able to add compared to some of the other versions was its added handle on the back for being able to carry the model and play around with it and swoosh around with it. So that's something we didn't see on previous Slave 1 versions, and now in 2019 we have it. So that's really cool to see because the Slave 1 was a weird set to pick up before, and this makes it a little bit easier. It actually makes these, because these panels are so loose, you can see one already broke here when I was grabbing it there, but uh, the, the uh, handle makes it a lot more fun to play around with and swoosh around with so let's go ahead and score the playability so for playability, I think I'm going to give the nod to the 2016 version just because I love the handle so much. It opens up so many more possibilities for playing around with this set. The second best playability to me is going to go to 2006, where you have the giant spring-loaded shooter, which I really do appreciate. 2010 is going to follow pretty closely with the four spot or third best, just gets four points. 2002 with Django Fett's Slave 1 is going to get three points here. And I think we got to give two points to the 2000 version and one point to the UCS version because it's UCS and it's literally not meant to be played with. So it probably shouldn't score high on playability. So that's all the points for playability that we can give out. Let's move on to design. For our design category, the obvious winner is going to be the UCS version. That version is going to get six points in this category, 
We're not even going to go more in depth on that. I think it's pretty obvious. The second version, though, is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I think that's going to go to 2010. That's going to get five points because I like the colors on it a little bit more than the 2006 version as far as accuracy goes. Not that I don't have a lot of nostalgia for that version right there. I love you. And anyway, uh, this version also just kind of closed everything up nicely. Everything that is a feature is kind of hidden, which is nice. The reason this one doesn't get more points than you would think, this one's actually going to come in fourth, is because of these. These these are just giant eyesores, literally, and the panels are also pretty weak. Like, if you pick it up with the panels, the panels are going to break, which is a shame. So, that's going to get six points. The 2010 version is going to get five points. The 2006 version is going to get four points. The 2019 version is going to get three points. Now, it comes down to Django Fett's or Boba Fett's version for two and one points. I think we got to give two points to Django Fett's version just because it was the first slave one to really break in the new design that they carried for quite a few years. The original version, obviously, you know, the technology wasn't there when they made this version, and it really shows. So, uh, you get one point. As far as value is concerned, we got to go over a few bits of key information that I usually go over at the beginning of my comparisons, but this time I saved it for this particular section. The 7144 Slave 1 from the year 2000 originally cost 20 bucks In 2019 money, though, that's almost $30 at $29.36 with just one minifig. Quite a sad sight. The 2002 Django Fett Slave 1 was 50 bucks back in the day. Now that would be about $70.25. That's insane to me. You only get two minifigs in that one. Back in 2006, with the Slave 1 you see before you, for $50, which would now be about $62.69 in 2019 money, pretty good deal still in my opinion, and four minifigures. Come 2010, we saw the price hike to $80 in 2010 money, which is about $92.74 in today's money. So $30 difference between those two Slave 1s. I'm not seeing it personally. 2015's UCS Slave 1 saw a price tag of $200, and it's only been four years since then, so that's only about $213 in today's money. And lastly, the newest Slave 1 costs $120 in today's money because it was literally just released more or less today. So that is all of the Slave 1s and how much they cost back when they were released versus what that would be in 2019 money with inflation accounted for. I think the best value has to go between the UCS or the 2006 six version sixty dollars in today's money is a pretty darn good deal for that slave one and i think i'm gonna have to give it the nod for the best value the ucs one is awesome but it does oh it's such a tough choice i'm going back and forth in my mind here i i should split it all right both these are gonna get six points i think it's too hard for me to decide i know a bunch of you guys in the comments are probably gonna be like oh but the ucs one's better value dude the 2006 one is an excellent value at 60 bucks in today's money with four minifigs 537 pieces so I'm going to split it. Both those sets are going to get six points. The next set will get four points. That's going to go to the 2019 version for 120 bucks in today's money because I just think with all the extra minifigs and features and gadgets they were able to include on this set, it's still a pretty dang good value. The next on the value list is going to be the original Slave 1. 30 bucks. I mean, obviously it's rough looking, but back in the day I could see it, so I'll give it the nod here for three points. Two points is going to go to the 2010 Slave 1 coming in at $90 in today's money, so yikes, but not too yikes. Not as yikes as $70 for this hunk of junk over here. I don't know, it's a tough choice, but but I am I have made the executive decision. This is my comparison video. You can correct me in the comment section below if you believe something's different, but this is my arbitrary feeling on this, and $70 is a lot for this. I just... I couldn't see it. That's about 20 cents per piece with 358 pieces. That's crazy. So that's going to be too much for me. And we're going to give it the nod as the worst value out of these slave ones. Pretty dang awesome to see all these though. Now it's time for the MNR opinion section. Basically, whatever I think straight up, whatever biases I have, just everything goes into this section. Nothing gets held back here. So which that do I think is the best? I think it's pretty obvious. It's got to be the UCS one, right? Like, it's just so beautiful. It's got an excellent figure selection. Not the best figure selection, but good enough. Especially that Boba Fett is really cool to get in this set with the arm printing. So I think a lot of people can appreciate that. So the UCS Slave one is going to go down as the best one in front whatever reason the the <laughs> the wings did not swing into place there you go ucs slave one is the best now this is where it gets a little bit tough for me i want to pick the 20th anniversary one i really do 
but those kill me. So 2006, baby, nostalgia train hype. Let's go. 2006 slave one going to get the five point nod from me. And I think the 2006 and the UCS one are really close in score. So we're going to be checking the score here after this category has all been scored. And then we are going to find out who won. And it's going to be close, I think. For me, the third best, just from what I like better visually, whatever I feel like, it's got to be 2010. I like the shape of it a little bit more. I like that it doesn't have spring-loaded shooters just pointing out of it. I like that it doesn't have a random orange color down near the wing. I always thought, I, I just think that's weird. None of the others, not even the UCS one has orange. Why does this one have orange? I don't know, but it's weird, and that's why I don't like it. So four points to 2010. We're going to give three points to 2012, and then we go between Django and Boba's original. It's going to be a two and a one there from me. So that is the entire LEGO Star Wars Slave 1 lineup, or at least the actual sets that have been released individually, compared and scored. Let's tally it up and find out what the best one is. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually really happy with the results. The 2006 Slave 1 came out at number one. Uh oh, wait. It tied with the UCS one, which, like, it just makes me happy that that's the conclusion I came to, because in my heart of hearts, those are the two that I like the most, and I, if I had to keep one, I pro I mean, I probably, like, if I had to, had to choose, I keep the UCS one just because it's UCS and it's huge, but my nostalgia factor for this one just, it counts. It just counts a lot, so... 2006, 2015 UCS are going to be a tie on my tally here with 24 points each. Coming in third place is going to be the 2019 version with 22 points. Not a bad showing. Pretty good. The fourth place version is going to go to 2010 with 19 points. Still not too bad. Then we get down to the dirty bottom uh, cellar dwellers, as they say. 10 points to the 2002 Django Fetch Slave 1. Didn't really hold up as good as uh, I thought it would. It's it's a nice set, but just compared to everything else, it's just not that great. They need to remake that one, really do. And then going on to the worst set of the comparison, it's going to be the original version. I hate to do it. You know, the technology wasn't there. They didn't have all the fancy pieces. You know, people will make that argument, but... When you look at it side by side, it clearly is worse than the others. So I, that's the way it's compared. It's not supposed to be a, a time sensitive thing. I even go in and change the prices to make them reflect what they would cost in today's money. We're just looking at them by today's standards. And by today's standards, that one is uh, not that great. So that is my entire LEGO Star Wars Slave 1 comparison. If you guys did enjoy the comparison, please leave a like. If you have a suggestion or a uh, wish for what you want to see me do for a future LEGO comparison video, leave it in the comments section down below. You can vote on the poll on screen for your favorite LEGO Star Wars Slave 1 model. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Also, let me know in the comments section down below what your favorite one is and why. If you would change anything about my uh, video here, let me know as well. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.